So today I'm going to start uh, a video series on reinforcement learning and this is the first video in that series. So uh, over the next few videos I will try to give a top view of reinforcement learning first. So this would be the first part of the introduction and the main theme of this video would be agent and environment because these are the major factors involved in reinforcement learning. So it's always a good idea to have a top view of what you are studying. So, so we can start uh, looking at the main things in the next few lectures so that we get a overall picture and then we will start exploring in depth those features. So straight away if you start uh, diving deep into one of those topics you some sometime lose the sight of where you are so it's very important to first get a top view then explore those things so let's start so first uh, most of you would be knowing that uh, we classify the machine learning into major three categories which fall under the bucket of supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning so supervised learning means that uh, there is a supervisor we have the input data as well as the output data so for example in image classification task you may be given some for training you will feed maybe 10,000 images of some class maybe car bike and so on so you you label explicitly those 10,000 images with car and bike and where they are located in the image so you have a labeled data so there is kind of a supervision you guide uh, the neural network that uh, at this part of the image there is a car located and uh, you try to figure out how you can represent a car by by see, looking at uh, a number of those examples so classification would fall under supervised learning similarly regression like you have some data about uh, maybe housing prices and uh, so you have various parameters uh, like the number of rooms in the city in which the house is located uh, the area of the house and many more factors and also the price of the house and those things so you feed the data and you also feed the output that is the price of the house so here we had discrete output like if we have five classes the, uh, the output will be either one two three four or five but in, in the case of regression we can have any continuous value so these kind of things like regression and classification fall under the supervised learning problem whereas in unsupervised learning problem you give feed a bunch of data uh, to the network and it's the job of the network to figure out how do some data are more related among themselves and some are less related uh, the best example would be the clustering example that we see often in when you open uh, Google News you will find that uh, some news like uh, Facebook last year lost 120 billion dollar in a single day of its market capitalization so that was a kind of a record fall for any company in the history so so at that time if you opened uh, Google News you would see one of those news and and also see that or the same news is reported by different sources and those would be clustered together like if click it it will expand the various sources and similarly some other news will be grouped in some other cluster so this uh, the network does in uh, unsupervised fashion it automatically finds out that these news items are uh, very related and it tries to group them together so clustering would be example of uh, unsupervised learning similarly for reinforcement learning is a completely different paradigm here uh, the learning is governed by the notion of reward and 
reward, punishment and these kind of approaches and there is a concept of agent which takes the action based on some policy and it interacts with environment and environment uh, gives out some observations and also some rewards to it based on its state and action so we will mainly focus in this part of introductory video about how the agent and environment interact among themselves so let's start with the reinforcement learning problem so as I stated earlier the agent and environment these are the two main uh, concepts in the reinforcement learning so so agent takes some action so this is this way so agent affects the environment so agent takes an action at time t and in the next time step agent receives a reward for its action action corresponding to time t that it took in time t time step t and it also gets some observation so remember these three flow of data agent takes some action and in return it receives a reward and some new observation and uh, while uh, comparing it with uh, other machine learning uh, paradigms you see that uh, in case of classification you have predefined what are the 10,000 images on which you are going to train the neural network so you have a, a fixed set of data whereas in the reinforcement learning there is no such fixed data like if there is a robot and it's trying to do some operation by learning then the next observation or the next reward it will receive will depend on its action like if robot starts from here and it goes in this direction then there may be some obstacles in the path of this side but there is no obstacle this side uh, so whatever observation it will receive or whatever data it will receive so robot is here but at some time it goes here so here it will receive completely different set of uh, experience different set of data different set of observations so its learning will be different based on a different data rather than if robot had started moving in this direction it would have received completely different data because environment state its state would be altogether very different so here the data it receives depends on the action the agent takes whereas in these cases we had a fixed set of data irrespective of uh, how the network starts training its weights it will be trained on uh, those images only so this is one of the key concepts that you should keep in mind so now let's look at some of the characteristics so as I said earlier there is no supervisor in this learning but rather it's based on reward signal so the main aim of the agent would be to maximize its cumulative reward over the time so this cumulative reward also we call the return so return is different from reward so reward we receive the agent received either in some cases after every step or every action it takes or sometimes the reward is defined to come after a very long period of time uh, but the return would be the cumulative uh, reward that the agent accumulates over the over a period of time and in this case uh, the feedback is delayed so so it's not immediate agent takes an action and it will receive a reward after some time and as I said earlier data depends on the agents action like if the robot had moved in started in this direction it will altogether receive a very different set of uh, data compared to if it had moved in this direction so the data that the agent receives depends on its actions some examples would be a broad set of example of reinforcement learning is while training the machine to play certain games so like playing a chess so with uh, 
initially it will take some wrong moves then it, it will get penalized and for some moves it will be rewarded and uh, similarly after uh, playing a number of times the agent is expected to learn how to play the game of chess and what would be the optimal strategy for maximizing its return another example would be moving making a robot to walk so it will walk uh, it will tumble it will fall down it will learn from its mistake it will again try to maximize its rewards and ultimately the robot should be able to walk and another example is flying a helicopter like you have a helicopter and you want it to perform certain maneuvers like you want the helicopter to make a swing like this or you want to uh, fly it upside down so so these would be the different maneuvers and here uh, you can train the helicopter to perform those maneuvers and let's see how we can define rewards for these examples so these would be just one way of defining the reward so first let's stand what a reward is so reward is a scalar feedback signal so you should have a scale where you can compare which reward is uh, better like if you have reward 1 and reward 2 you would have some mechanism of comparing these rewards like reward 1 is better than reward 2 and it should be an indicator of how well the agent is doing at time t so reward will indicate uh, how good the action was uh, so uh, because the main aim of the agent is to maximize uh, those cumulative rewards over time and for the chess game you can define a positive reward for winning the game and negative for losing the game and in robot walk uh, we can define positive for forward movement negative for falling similarly for helicopter if, if it performs the uh, trajectory that it was supposed to perform then it will get positive reward and negative if it somehow crashes the helicopter so these are some of the ways of defining the reward now let's look at a concept called sequential decision making that is very important in uh, reinforcement learning so the agent select selects actions to maximize the total future rewards so it's kind of sequential decision making it takes one action and it receives uh, some observation based on that action and it, it moves to a new different state and in the next state it again uh, tries to maximize uh, re future rewards from there and it takes a new action so uh, it will be a kind of sequential process and it will have long term consequences where the agent may uh, lose some uh, short term rewards in where it finds that it, it has the potential for a higher reward in future so the agent will can sacrifice immediate rewards it's not like uh, a totally greedy algorithm where uh, you have to maximize the step uh, the reward in the very next step so some examples would be like uh, some moves in chess may not look very obvious uh, benefiting in the next step but in the long run it may be a good strategy f for that move similarly for financial investments you you have to uh, make some investment at the current time so you take some negative reward at the moment expecting a higher return in the future and uh, other example could be that you spend uh, money on uh, getting some uh, higher degree uh, MS degree or uh, some higher degree uh, you spend some money uh, in the current so you are uh, accepting accepting a, a negative reward or you, you are sacrificing some rewards you could have saved that money but you expect that it will give you very high returns uh, in the future so you take those actions so those are some examples now let's uh, understand this interaction between agent and environment so at time step t what agent does agent executes an action so agent executed some action based on its policy and it receives observation from environment 
and also a scalar reward and what environment does environment receives actions and emits observation OT plus 1 so in one time step it uh, environment receives the action and based on that action in the next time step it will emit an observation and reward so T we will increment on the environment side so after uh, we will count it as two step like agent takes some action at time t and after at in the next time step environment will emit reward and observations so uh, you need to keep in mind uh, this interaction these three things actions rewards and observations and how agent and environment among interact among themselves so this was the first part of the introduction so uh, I will try to give the top view in following uh, video videos so thanks for watching give your valuable feedback and don't forget to subscribe if you like my videos thank you